Hey everybody, it's Craig Bechter here from craigbechter.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how we took this photo that I'm about to show right now. Alright, that should be it right there. I'm going to show you how we took this photo. Basically, I'm going to take you behind the scenes. I'm going to show you the gear that we used, the uh, set location, and then I'm going to take you into Adobe Photoshop and show you the post-production of how we got the finished product. So stick around. I think you're really going to get a lot out of this video. And in the next part, we're going to be behind the scenes on location. All right, so here we are. We're on location. I'm just waiting for the two models to show up. They're going to be here in about five minutes. You can see behind me, it's a very kind of gothic castle looking type of setting for a vampire shoot. Now, it's about, um, I'd say it's about half an hour before sunset. So by the time we get all set up, it should be almost dark. And then we could sort of stop it down a bit to make it look a little darker. So we've got uh, two Einsteins that we're going to be using with the Vagabond Mini. And I've got two beauty dishes. It was really windy earlier, so I didn't want to bring my softbox or an umbrella, but now the wind has died down. But anyway, we're going to start off. We've got uh, two beauty dishes we're going to use for our lights, probably with uh, diffusers just to spread the light out. And uh, well, anyway, you'll see what happens when uh, we get set up. Uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, you guys ready? Okay, just, uh, just strike a pose. Like, uh, I've got the whole house because I just want to get a couple... Yeah, sort of like look uh, creepy vampire-ish. Yeah, she's got it right. Yeah, okay, maybe like you could put your hands in your pockets like that or something like that or... Yeah, just be kind of creepy vampires. Okay, cool. All right, you guys ready? Okay. <laughs> what do you see the lighting? I might have to go a little higher with it, but it already, like, check it out. Maybe kind of kneel down. Him or me? Both of you guys, maybe. Or, yeah, or you're kind of over behind her like that, yeah. Maybe a little lower, like kind of lower, lower. Like, like her head's there and your head's there, yeah, like that kind of thing. Yeah, something like that, okay. Yeah, maybe start that way, like you see something. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, that's cool. Right there, okay. You ready? One, two, three. Okay, I'll get most of this doorway in. Oh, that's pretty neat. Okay, ready? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's a little better. All right, so here we are in the post-processing part of the video. Now, we took quite a few images around this whole castle theme, and we kind of agreed that we like this one. And so we decided to work on this. Now, the behind-the-scenes video was filmed on the Canon XF100. We didn't have any continuous lighting going. It was just natural light. So as it got darker, as you saw in the video, it was very grainy. The low-light performance in the Canon XF100 is nothing like the Canon 5D. But whatever, I mean, it sort of captured what we did behind the scenes. So here we are. I usually like to preview the images in Lightroom and then just get a, a feel for it. And then I do most of my editing in Photoshop. But you can see here we shot this on the Canon 5D Mark III at ISO 100. Um, I had a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. We were at 35 millimeter. We were at f4.0 and 160th of a second. So that was the camera settings. And I was using the color checker passport, so I know that the uh, white balance is just a little bit higher than this. We shot it at 5600 and uh, it was around 5700 plus 33 because um, I have a custom camera setting. So what we'll do is we'll go into Photoshop and we'll start working on this. So I like to open it up in Photoshop as a smart object. And I'll show you something that I like to do. So here we are, we're in Photoshop and we've got a smart object so I can open that up in Camera Raw and then I could make some adjustments. So let me just make this a little smaller so you can see it. I'll drag it down here. Now you can see here it's got some of the camera information. So what I like to do is I make a custom color profile using the color checker passport and I've got one here set for our lens and then I'll just get rid of a few things there. That's the uh, chromatic aberration in the profile and then I'll go back here and I'll adjust my color temperature which I check the white balance is about 5700 plus 33, so somewhere around there. So that's pretty accurate from what it looked like. Now, as far as exposure, I'm happy with that. I might just take the contrast down a bit, the shadows up a bit, and then what I'll do is I'll say, okay. 
And then what I'll do is I'll make a copy of this image. I'll right click it and say new smart object via copy. I'll put it to soft light and then I'll open that up. What I like to do is I go up here and I say convert to grayscale. And then I might just pump up the orange a little bit and the yellows a little bit and say OK. So I'm combining the two images and I've got this set on soft light and then I usually like to lower it to about maybe eh, about 40 percent, 30 to 40 percent depending on the photo. Now if I make it bigger you can see as I toggle this off it just kind of brings in a little more of the darks on the image. You can see that. I mean it's just subtle but I think it adds a little something to it. So then I'll merge the two together and I'll make a copy. Now on this layer um, I noticed here I can see a flagpole in the picture, a little distracting and these leaves here, I find them a little distracting. So I want to get rid of those two elements. Now we filmed this at a national park in Halifax. And so this is like a Canadian flag right here. So I've just got the content aware move tool. You can use this in CS6. I don't know if it's in CS5. But anyway, I've just got that there. I circled the flagpole and then I'm just going to go up to edit, fill, and content aware and I'll say OK and it should just take that right out. And there you go, that's gone. So now I'm going to go up to here and go select, deselect. And then I've got this little image here of the, uh, the leaves. So I want to get rid of those too. And same thing, I'm going to go up to edit, fill, content aware, and that should take care of that for me. So there, I've got rid of a couple of distracting elements now. So I've got to select, deselect. And now we've got the, uh, the basic image to work with here. Now this is a little bright in the, uh, the final image. I won't go through everything because it took me a little bit of time, but I took this down a little bit using um, a layer. I took down the pocket, the red here, the boot. I think I might have got a little carried away. Um, but basically, how I'm getting that look that you're seeing so I'll just make a snapshot here. Shift Option Command E on the Mac. Um, I've got a filter here and we'll go to it and it's Topaz Labs, Topaz Adjust. And that gave us really the effect um, of the final image. And I'll just make this a little smaller so you can see it. I'll bring it down here. Now you can see here part of the Vibrant Collection. If I click on Gritty you can see that's a pretty cool effect and that gives us our creepy look. So I'm clicking OK and I'm applying it now. Um, now the photo I'm going to show you at the end of this, I did get rid of some of the lines here on his forehead using the uh, healing brush. And that's not, a, you know, not necessary obviously in this kind of photo because it's supposed to be a little creepy anyway. So take it around about 65%. I found mm, not quite, so maybe around 70 take it to about 70% opacity and you can see the difference. It takes them from normal looking people to a lot more vampirish and gritty. And so that's basically the key ingredient to this whole vampire series was that effect. And then from here you can do whatever you want as far as, you know, making the pocket a little darker or, but you pretty much got a pretty good looking image right there just by applying that one effect. Now I know not everybody has that Topaz Adjust, but uh, it's pretty cool and that's what gave me the look. So that's kind of a behind the scenes of how we shot the, the pictures and then what we did it for uh, po post-processing. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you stop by my website, craigbecta.com. I've got more tutorials there and subscribe while you're here and stay tuned for some more videos. All right, I'll see you in the next one.